single one of these things start with apparently we're just rumoring. Apparently. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to launch into this because who knows if it's working or not. Uh, I'm going to turn that thing up, go away. Hi, welcome. This is the Out of Rock where every week uh, we get together and we um, help each other through and we hang out and we talk about stuff. Luckily, stuff is one of my favorite things I love talking about. Um, first and foremost, I want to acknowledge the Tongva people as the traditional loan landowners of Los Angeles. Um, and I thank you for your healing energy and I thank you for your tenacity. Every Saturday, here is the Out of Rock. Um, watching it on Twitch it seems to be good and whatever. <laughs> this is made possible with Angel Spit's Patreon. Um, and I thank those who have joined. And if you got three bucks a month, uh, I would be so grateful and you're going to help keep everything going because God knows I really need it. I think we all really need it. And even if you're not a Patreon member, so much of this stuff's free because we got to keep each other going. New album, Ice Planet 9000, Sequence 2, Star Chamber. I'm really happy with it. Thanks, Brett. I was about to send you an order out, actually. I've got it over there on the table. Um, T-shirts came in. I'm really happy with them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with them. I'm, I'm happy. And Alex, I'm yours is out. The CD's not out yet. Long story, but it's oh, it's coming. Uh, um, there's a whole bunch of music, and and some of the people here, are actually, everybody here is represented on the Industrial Incisions playlist. Go listen to it. There's some great music I want you to learn about, and um, it's got some very fantastic stuff, as well as some golden oldies. And some golden newies. I don't know. Yep. Um, and after this, we're going to rate to MTV TV because it's fantastic. And I need, is it Josie? What's your cat's That's name? Josie. Josie! Okay. As in, and the pussycats. Eh? Right? <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, we're going to rate to MTV TV. And they're awesome. They've also got a Patreon. Um, so check them out. They're bloody great. We just lost Alex. And Alex is back. I think I just don't know how this works. I don't know how anything works. Welcome. Um, normally we sit down starters and we say, hey, what are we talking about today? But we didn't do that today. Because uh, flying by the seat of my pants is how it works. Rizzy, what were we talking about? Uh, we started talking about your uh, production oh, yeah. and stuff. And then you were like, hey, we should talk about this in public. And I said, <laughs> yes. And then we are. <laughs> we are. So, um, yeah, I'm putting together all the Ice Planet 9000 stuff, and you can't see it. Oh, look, you can see it. Oh, yeah. So that's the top. That's actually the top of a uh, of a plastic thing, as you can tell. Um, and it, it's great. I'm. I'm I, it's really fun doing this. Like, and um, so what I'm doing is I'm getting the Angel Spit uh, lids, the Angel Spit merch boxes, and I'm destroying oh. them. And I. I have a secret love of kit bashing. So I'm making them look like pieces of destroyed spaceships. Um, and it's excellent fun. Excuse me, coughing. It's really, really good fun. Because it's making my brain work in ways that are not normal, that my brain don't normally work in. Um, it's using exercising another point. Plus, I'm watching a whole bunch of Adam Sa uh, Savage stuff, like kit bashing and all those humans who kit bash. And it's what's fascinating about it is you start walking around the house going, I could turn that into a spaceship. <laughs> and that's a good way to be, I think. Um, I'm, and it's, it's similar because like I've noticed in music, um, you can, uh, there's a lot of, um, the thing I love about painting is that it also exercises a different part of your brain. And it's a part of your brain that um, is open to the possibility that uh, 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 to be inspired by different process also feeds music. So painting, the creative project, uh, 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 brain matter required to paint <clears throat> is similar, but not the same as creating music, very similar. And it's wonderful when you're doing this because you're expanding the mind's ability to fix problems which predominantly I think music's about fixing problems. There's a song I'm working on right now and it's, the lyrics are great. 
I am so happy with these lyrics. Oh my God, I am happy with these lyrics. But the music, I just, it, it's funny that I came up with this structure um, and then I, I kind of put everything out on parts. Like, you know, this is going to be, and, and, and it's really funny. I started on the modular and it was like, yeah, it's good. But then I went over to the, um, to the Emacs. And as soon as I bring the Emacs into something, it's like, fucker means business. Um, it just, hey, look at me ranting about the Emacs again. Um, but, uh, it, but what's really curious is that I'm listening back to it going, there's no song here. Like at the core of this, what is the song? What is that bass line that, that make? and do you notice I just did that for a bass line? Yeah. Yeah. Not song fault. Yeah. No. Um, but slap yeah. bass. Yes. Bring back slap, slap bass. But it's really interesting that um, I'm listening to the music going, okay, this is great. It's all technically interest, not really interesting, but it's technically good, but it's not, oh, wow, that's really cool. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm needing to open my mind to the happy accidents. I have to go to happy accidental land. That's a good thing about having a sampler is that you can just, and I was thinking the other day, I'm ranting now and please stop me. I was thinking the other day that the first time I sampled a bass from another song, like just uh-huh. a bump, <laughs> and then it was like, oh, wow, I love that sound. Now I can play it. Yeah. Well, the oh, first, oh. yeah. And the first I time the same memory. Yeah. And that was that was something clicked inside my brain where i went oh my god same thing went with with a full sample of a of a rhythm pattern from a drum kit like a drum uh, break like certainly looping that but uh, uh, like a really bright with fret noise bass with some release noise in it that when you you know like let it play out there was articulation in it and that's under your keyboard control and you can sequence and stuff yeah and it's really fantastic how I, you know, like you said, with those drum breaks, the first time I heard it and I went, I can change the pitch of this. I can change. And what's interesting is that I'm not really drawn to um, stretching, time stretching. Mm. I'm still really old. Yeah, I, I prefer to stick it in the Emacs and drop its pitch or raise its pitch because it does something. Yeah. It really does something. Um, like it turns, it gives it crunch. And I'm sure you can digitally emulate that crunch. I don't have a digital emulator, so I don't give a shit. But I do, actually. I have an emulator for it, but that's not what I'm talking about. Um, and it's easy to do it, you know, whatever. Um, although apparently it takes more processing power for your computer to do it uh, per capita than it does for your Emacs. Because the Emacs just went, as I play it higher, <clears throat> I have to... Uh, it's just doing it mechanically as opposed to digital blah, blah, blah. Uh, that went nowhere. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, so there's differences. Ahead. Did yeah. you happen to catch, this is like right on topic because you mentioned Savage. Did you watch his last, I don't know, I'm looking at what date it was, but uh, Personal Tragedies, Effects on Creativity was the title. He puts out so many clips and, and videos. It's hard to no, keep track. I missed it. I missed it. His, his gift for speaking what seems like extemporaneously is just like, it's inspirational. Like I know he's got a lot of hours doing just that and public speaking and being on camera and stuff, but he's so good. And the way he was talking about some of his love for the work was worth worth a check i mean i I'll don't know if you want me to throw the link in please there. do let's have a look yeah. i'm pasting um, that into the uh i guess youtube chat might be a good place for that since it's okay could, there uh, and I'll put thank, it in the, yeah. thank you um berm. yes uh that's a real trick for some reason i yeah alex is coming and going which is weird alex stay with us uh, um so thank you i'm gonna put this everywhere as well now um he talked a, a, like specifically about um his pleasure of being in professional spaces and working with people who also are carried by the spirit of their predecessors and the giants of, the, of whom shoulders yeah. they're standing on and you know taking uh, art and creativity very very personally and seriously in that way and i was like oh man oh yeah a mainstream it's- geek figurehead talking about this stuff it's like oh, uh, well, okay so that's that sounds like I, i'm i'm gonna watch that um i uh th- this is a really interesting thing because i'm i'm really in the mood to spread healing energy right now 
um, it's fascinating that uh, plus somebody I work with is is totally into the Grateful Dead, um, and the Grateful Dead uh, have their shaman. Um, shaman I never really got into, but shaman I think I need to start getting into, especially Mickey Hart, the the, the drummer. The way that the, the Mickey Hart's concept is that drums carry with them the ancestors. My mate Steve, uh, who's the keyboard tech, I think he's the greatest keyboard tech in the world. Um, him and I have these conversations about how there are certain synthesizers that have etched out a spiritual realm um, that when you start playing that synth like a mini Moog, you, there are certain you are accessing the thought, the inspiration of Bernie Warwell, Stevie Wonder, Song Ra, um, you know, the greats who experimented and used this machine are connected to the electronics and the circuitry and the mind and the soul of this device. And I absolutely believe pianos have a trans-dimensional soul. I think pianos have got songs in them and all you have to do is sit in them and, and say, hey, let me, let me talk to you. Right. So, you know, it was funny, you were talking about uh, your struggles with your song uh, uh, there at the beginning. I have the exact same problem, or I have the exact opposite problem. I like the music, and part of that is uh, written with a piano. Uh, but I am, and I am struggling to write the lyrics because I am trying to fictionalize real things. And right. so it's hard to do that mental flip sometimes but i thought that was kind of cool mm. it's here's an interesting thing that i've noticed about me and I, I hope this somehow helps is that every time i've tried to create something that is inspired by based on or bites for want of a better term something else i fail even my own music i fail and I have to then spend many, many hours undoing what I've done to try to get back to the soul. I, th I remember David uh, from Taint once said that you have to find the soul of the song and yeah. work from there. And that ex th then you build its organs and its skeleton and you put a skin on it and then you give it armor and weaponry. Although that may or may not be appropriate, but you know, maybe that weaponry is a flower. Who knows? Um, <laughs> but yeah, you have to, um, you have to forge this thing's life and uh, you have to forge its character so that when somebody meets it for the first time, they go formidable. Um, and that takes time and it's okay to spend time on it. And that's why, you know, you're often, you know, bouncing one or two, 20 or 30 songs at the same time in a folder on your computer <laughs> <laughs> so true so true so yeah it's that's really fascinating i you know do you go um is it politics that feeds you or news things that feed you or do you listen to the music and go what story are you telling me um in this particular kick so it you know, of course, there's many drivers, but um, uh, in this particular case, it would be more personal events that are just kind of rumbling around in my head and won't shut up. And uh, they needed a vector. And so it turned into musical energy. And so I know what the song's about. And musically, it is aligned. Uh, it's, you know, I, I literally was sat there with a metronome and was just jamming on the piano. And, uh, it, it was one of those that came right out. Um, it, so musically, I'm happy with it. I've, I've done most of the edits. I've been spending time doing treatments with various sound effects and loops to really kind of give it a an atmosphere. Um, and I've got a concept for how I want to do the lyrics. It's just, it's one of those areas where, you know, this is just part of the process, if you will, uh, where... You want it to not, so you want to talk about personal things in a way that is relatable to as many people as possible without calling out just that one specific thing and narrowing the perspective. 
And so what I'm doing is I'm building a story. And I can tell you that the story is based on a person who has just received the, the order to launch nuclear missiles. Mm. And how it, and that's, that's the fiction that I'm building for it and what the impacts of that narrative are. Hmm. Hmm. That's great. Yeah. I've, uh, funny. I've, I've, I've been exactly there. Um, except mine, the, the, um, directive to do the world ending destruction was the, the fictional, um, conceit for the, um, emotional psychological component. That was the, the actual story, the, the, the first level thing. So, um, that's kind of funny that we've got that, that flipped, but you've got, yeah. I mean, like you said, the process, there's plenty of mm -hmm. time and room for thinking it through. Um, but also you said um, something, I, I don't remember exa your exact words. So forgive me for putting words in your mouth, but there's, there's always um, the pursuit to make it universal, but yeah. of course not always, because sometimes there's, you know, a very good artistic reason to make it extremely specific. And um, does she go down in you in a theater, you know, comes out that instead of <laughs> love, 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 Ugh. like, you know, the, the breadth of how you can address similar uh, amorous sentiments in, in those two examples, sometimes specific and, and like, as if it's about, uh, uh, bet you think the song is about you is, is, is the real uh, thing that, that, breaks it for you when you get there. So don't forget that. Isn't uh, go ahead, Frank. Agreed. Isn't uh, she went down on me in a theater as she wants revenge song? <laughs> <laughs> um anyway. I, YouTube channel I got uh, I had um I have a friend who can turn anything into a she wants revenge song. Anything. Um they, I used to have the yeah. ability to turn anything into a Morrissey song and a Metallica <laughs> song, but that's gone now. But I interrupted you with randomness. I apologize. Please keep going. Oh, it was okay. Uh, you know, it, you know, I, I was, I was, I was simply just, you know, uh, conversing. <laughs> it's um. Th this is a really interesting one because uh, when you reach that point, you know what? Maybe doing a pretend Morrissey song or a whatever song is. You reach that point in a song where you've put all this life into it and it's this beautiful thing. And it's almost this moment of despair where you go, oh, my God, I don't know how to dress you. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do next. And um, I, I'm a big believer in the – and hi, Kitty. Kitty Bell, I think you're in Melbourne, so it's like 4 a.m. there. And Emmanuel, thank you for joining us. And uh, Alistair, yeah, DX7, whatever. I've secretly – and hey, Rob. I've secretly become a, a um, fan of the DX7. Don't tell anyone though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but no, it's, it's really interesting that it's, I'm a big believer that your brain will come up with a solution because it's always thinking about things. Um, and when you least expect it, like it happened to me the other day, I had this fucking, uh, yeah, uh, oh, 4.30 in New South Wales. Good on you, Kitty. Um, I had this epi epiphany the other day about, oh my God, this is a song and I don't know how to turn this amazing concept into words and phrases that rhyme in a place where I couldn't write them down. Um, I I'm, I'm hoping it will come back, but it's just really fascinating how, um, it's just fascinating how it just comes. And it, it, I had a glimmer of this track that I'm working on at the moment that I'm hoping I could share with everybody on Patreon this month, but we'll see. Um, uh, I had a glimmer of how, what the music sounds like. Um, it's funny that there's a sound back to the Emax. There's a sound that is, uh, when I got my, the Emax sent over from Australia, the, the rack mount, it came with a bunch of discs and some of those discs had been lost for like since the nineties. And they were in the fucking box with the Emax. And of course it works. Of course the everything works. It's bloody great. Um, but the um, and there's a sound called ung. Oh, ug called ug. And it's that um, really 
It sounds like a square wave Apex Twin kind of sound, but it's actually a DX7 with like a couple of sine waves stacked. It's nothing too, but it's that bow, bow. It's that it's being used everywhere. But this is an original sample of. I don't know who the fuck it's an original sample of, but this is from the 90s. It was sampled in the 90s at 16 bit. And it's, oh God, I love the Emacs. And it's on a disc. And I, um, Emacs Ugg boot. That's it. Thank you, uh, Rob. It's, um, a bit, but I was, can I just share this? Just give me a sec here. Um, so the thing I love, adore about the Emacs is that, you know, when you're looking for songs, uh, for sounds and you don't know where they are, the thing about the Emacs is, I hope you can see that, you can actually write on the disc what oh. sounds are on it. And on this one, this has become the golden disc. Um, this has got the Bear Light Sara on it. I've got two different versions of Sara. This is the 16-bit version, so it's like really, really and gritty. Um, it's got a sound of a window closing, which I call window hell, which I used on, here's Ivan. I used it on a few albums ago and it's, I haven't used it. And I listened to it and I went, oh my God, this is intense. Um, and it's got some great clangs and fair light, the R vocals. It's got the DX7 bass sounds on it, that UG sign bass and a great KR55 sample of uh, the, the drum machine really good sample i'm it's great i'm really happy with it and um slap bass there it is and that's the emulator 2 slap bass customized yes okay cool hold on who sent that that was all right all right you've got a dx7 don't you brent yep something's great so do uh, you use dx with it uh, I, I haven't in a minute, but that's only because the curse, well, has the algorithms. Um, Bam. At least the PC4 does. And so I'm able to generate a lot of the same sounds out of the same instrument. Now, admittedly, there is tonal differences between the chipsets. Um, Good to know. But that, but that mix is, is why I opted to pull out my Casio instead of the DX. Mm. Good stuff. It's, um, see, another great thing about a sampler is you, um, you sample the sound and then you play it out of the context. And like, sure, admittedly, one bummer about a sampler is you can't really, like with the DX7, you can put some wonderful changes on the dynamics as you increase the um, touch sensitivity. You can really make that thing bite. Thank you, Seth, for kindly gifting me the TX7. Um, yeah, I used to hate DX7s, but now it's like, okay, this is really good. And this, like I, I said before, there's over a million sounds for the DX7 now. Like you can just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll on DX. It's, and some of those sounds are great. Like you, you put those things in as pads and it's like, wow, instant glass. And the oh, it's, it's quite good. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, it's something I love doing is getting those big, beautiful, glassy sounds and putting it through. I've got an old um, piece of shit stone, uh, bad stone uh, phaser. I got on Craigslist for like fifty, forty dollars. Yeah, but I, stone. oh, it's good. Yeah, it's I had to buy the guy a coffee. <laughs> it was a good coffee too. Um, oh, oh, it's good. You got to compress stuff and watch your volumes because they distort. Um, so did the bad stones, but you've always got to compress a copy. And but um, you, um, oh, it's just because it's got so many harmonics in the DX7 uh, or TX7, TX81, whatever. Um, they just love uh, that they love to be manipulated, and they work so beautifully with compression, and they. Um, Oh, and it kills me to say this, but the bass is so clean. Like the bass is so well defined and there's bass in it. There's quite a lot of bass in it. Um, I feel like I'm betraying my religion for saying that. But... Chain it to an Elisa's quadruverb and, uh, and, and what that, and, and it, it, it gets dang close to what an early Kurzweil can do. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Oh, pretty stuff.
Hey, we're talking about gear. The, I'm, um, just, I'm sorry, go ahead, Raz. You were talking about um, phasers. Uh, just wanted to mention the um, new meld synth in um, Ableton Live 12 has kind of novel. I don't know if I've seen it anywhere, but an actual phaser as the filter section, like no, you know, it's got high pass, low pass and distortions and dirty filters and stuff. But one of the modes of the filter is just phaser. So you change the polar distance and, and peak resonance and it'll do its own LFO style thing, but it works um, to the point of, of s close to self oscillation. So if you put some impulsy kind of things into it from the oscillator section, it'll do some just beautiful self resonant car plus strong pingy mm, mm. textural stuff with the phaser and the filter section out to the amp. And it's, uh, I mean, you wire that up all the time with your modular or your effects chain or whatever, but having it built into a synth where, uh, it, it's presented as, as the, the you know, the, the synthesizer ADSR plus filter chain, it's the oscillator filter chain. It's cool. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to go into therapy mode now. Yeah, Ivan, I'm looking at you. Um, so Ivan wants to buy an emulator for, I have one right here. I'm not selling it to you. It's funny. I was going to sell my emulator for, cause I just went, look at you. You're right. You're rubbing your hands. Um, the, um, yeah, I was going to sell it and I took photos and everything. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to use it on one more song. And it's like, oh my God, I am not selling this thing. Um, I think the emulator for there's a lot of fucking around. If you're going to use it, I think it's got to be mounted right in front of you here. So you can go boom, 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 and actually use it. Um, so it's right there. It's not on a rack over there. It's right here. Um, the emulator four is a grand workhorse and you can do absolutely everything on it. You are literally rubbing your hands right now. The effects are quite good. Um, the delays and the reverbs are stunning. Um, it sounds great. My one issue with it is that the, you can't really get, uh, if you've got the turbo, you can drop the bit right. Um, cause I've got the, um, I, I put a turbo chip in mine and it's got compression and all this fun stuff. Um, but you can't, and it's got Doppler as well, um, which I've never used it. I've always gone, oh, I don't want to use Doppler, but I never did. Um, it doesn't sound cause I thought, oh, wow, maybe I could use these to start replacing some of the workload on the Emacs's. It is not an Emacs. Um, and, but yet it is a beautiful sampler. And it's, it's really funny that people are now getting all excited about the emulator three, but they're overlooking the emulator four. that the, the filters on this thing are beautiful. Like the, the back phases and, and when you're getting into the, yeah, the actual, so it's got this thing on it called uh, Z plane morphing, which I think the ESI 32 does as well, or is it just high pass? It's just a low pass. I think it's just a low pass. Don't get rid of that because I'm pretty fucking sure the ESI32 is either the same digital uh, low pass as the Emulator 3 XP or the Emacs. Do not get rid of it. Um, and you have to use it, Ivan. Uh, the um, you uh, I don't know if the Emulator 4 Turbo, I think the Turbo does read PC files. Um, mine does not because mine's just an X, I had to update it to the uh, turbo, but unfortunately it still doesn't read a PC file format just cause it's not, it's an update. And that's one thing that didn't come across. So I have to fuck around with um, Emusa. I have to transport stuff to a zip disk, fuck around, fuck around, fuck around, fuck around. And that's one thing about it that really tits me. But the, the sound libraries on this are stupid. Like it's just ridiculous. Um, the, the, the filters are ridiculous. And if you really, 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 really deep dive into some of the shit people do on an, on an X, on a, on a fucking emulator four, like it's just, um, uh, a, a lot of the really, uh, drums and bass stuff is that's all emulator four. Um, and it sounds beefy. It sounds grand. And you've got 128 fucking voices. Um, and the MIDI is fast. The processing is fast. It's, it's just a delight. 
There you go. Get it. Um, get them while they're still cheap. Alex. Oh, actually, Ivan, your hand's up. Do you want to say anything? Or is yeah, your mic? I've, uh, I've had, I've, the, my theory is, like, I'll keep the, uh, the, the ESI-32 because it is fun. Also, I think that, like, I'm going to move my, my, my drum samples over to it and then use that as my, like, the player for percussion. And then, you know, I want, I want the, the, the emulator for turbo for like run and bass, you know, primary. Oh, if you have pads and stuff, put that bass. on there as well. Oh, it's absolutely. But because like he's really good at making just amazing bass sounds, mm. um, you know, that I really like. And, you know, I've found with the V like I'm using the, uh, yeah, the, you mentioned the emulator too. Yeah, the VST, and you know, like I'm just always writing with it because it gives it so much fun to use, and yeah. it sounds so good. Okay, um, the I think the layout of the emulator four is more in line with the ESI thirty two emulator. Yeah. yeah, Emu walked away from uh, Emacs emulator, emulator two, Emacs two, emulator three, all have a really similar um mindset for the the menus and everything i can do anything on an emacs real quick really really fast because it's really simple the emul uh the emulator 4 is a little bit more complicated it is most definitely not um an emulator 2 they're different different machines um if you want an uh, uh like an emulator 2 get an emacs um because they sound it's extremely similar. And I'm, I'm going to say something that people are going to freak out at me about. Oh my God, Rob, if you have Emacs discs, please send. Um, uh, the thing about the, um, the Curtis chip on the Emacs and the emulator two are okay. They're not amazing. Like they're okay. Um, I actually think that the digital filters on the um, so the analog filters, the digital filters on the um, uh, emulator emulator three, are uh, and Emacs two, uh, they sound different. They sound a bit bolder. Um, uh, I don't want to take anything away from them. They're great, the emulator two and the, and the Emacs's, um, but the um, when you listen to the emulator four, it's like yeah, this is digital. It sounds digital, but it packs a fucking punch um yeah it is not an emulator 2 though and you can't really fake it to sound like an emulator 2 because the grunge element like i said before with the emulator 4 you can go in there and you can say oh, i want to convert the bit rate to only 8 bit now so it's going to sound more like an emacs it does not it doesn't have the guttural gurgle it doesn't have the fucking it's 1990 and we meet we mean business and i am the pretty hate machine i am too dark park that's not what it is um if you want it, it, it is it is a grand grand sound of the emulator 4 it's huge yeah big 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 huge sound hope that helps um yeah and it's just the menu diving's a pain in the dick. For me, a little bit anyway, but there you go. Carl shoots his mouth off about sense. But definitely get it, it's fucking great. You probably won't have anywhere to put it. Right now, no. That's okay. Um, thank you. Alex, I wanna hear your wisdom now. Firstly, what's in the oven? Pizza. Of course, you know, I think we need to say, have a, have a part of the show where it's like, hey, Alex, what pizza's in the oven? What flavor? Uh, pepperoni chili, I don't know how to call it. And for those of us who are not familiar, I personally think German pizza is fucking amazing. People think Germans aren't good cooks. I think it's great. I think Germans are bloody good cooks healthy fantastic food but over to you alex yeah i think i'm a really big fan of sampling even if i don't need it because i have enough synthesizers 
uh, but it gives it a much different flavor. What I do is just make a synth patch, sample it, and then even if I'm in Ableton, just put it into a sample instrument and then use that and it feels much different than just using a soft synthesizer. And mm. I feel like this. Something special about just repitching things, just dump simple uh, sample rates without any fancy form and stuff, just repitching it, and that gives it a certain flavor that I really, really like. And yeah, and if I were to get a vintage sampler, I would either get a cheap one or another consideration I thought about, but I don't know anything about them, is to get one which can read multiple formats like Archive, Roland, whatever. Yeah, yeah that, like that. Uh, that would be Kurzweil, um, and that would be Emulator. Um, and don't start me and Brent on Kurzweil because it's so good. One thing you might want to consider, if you want to get the, that vintage gurgly sound, I think one of the best bit crushes is the Dofa 181A-189-1. Um, 189-1. Uh, it's the bit crusher. And it's, it's really fucking great. You throw anything and it's cheap. You throw in anything into that thing and you can drop it. You can change the sample rate and the bit rate and you can CV control that shit. Um, and when you start saying, oh, I'm going to use it like it's a filter to be using a bit crusher like a filter. So I'm going to drop the bit rate of it like I would a filter or, or the sample rate. It's like, oh oh wow it's just it, it's something new and wonderful and and for you can't do that on anything else or maybe you can i don't know but it's just so that's the dofa a oh, i suck listen to me a1 <laughs> the a189-1 it's fucking great fucking cheap fucking good and it's got a whole bunch of different um modes of of, of sample ruination um fucking great alex go yeah it's um not something i'm currently playing to but it's just something that's like if i have the money and opportunity strikes sort of a deal and uh, also i recently thought about you because there are rumors that they're making a new k 2000s derivative. oh yeah the 2700 I read the manual of the last one and I thought, wow, that's really interesting, but I can't be bothered with this uh, sort of modular approach of synthesis with the different blocks that you stack on top of each other. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Oh shit. Brent, hold me back, man. So look, I I'm just, I I'm, I'm going to shoot my mouth off about two things. Already, if I may, I'll be quick. I won't. Um, I had to listen to a 2700. It was way too clean for me. It's an amazing, perfect machine that is, it's, 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 if a synthesizer reached enlightenment, it would be a K2700. And in fact, unfortunately, enlightenment's great, but it's a bit boring. Um, I think that the best Kurtzwell is the K2000, closely followed by the 2500, um, which they're kind of the same. The 25 is a bit cleaner. The 26 is rather clean, I think. Um, Brent might disagree with me on that one. I love them but, all, but I'm I, I, I'm a really big fan of the PC3. All right, what's its its lineage is what? PC4. The PC4 is the same as is that a 26? It's basically a 26, but it adds the uh, adds the FM synthesis uh, portions that you would find on a, like a DX7. So if I so in that regard, it makes it really easy to translate what i already knew how to do to this instrument if i want to come something custom but in terms of uh but as well you have the the same vast uh, architecture as well so you can truly just mess up anything um and and vast is the word uh, alex i don't know if you ever saw i did a video about the k2000 and it's like it's so it is such a lot like it's it's ahead of its time it, it it is just like Ray Kurzweil is a fucking genius. He is on the level of Tesla of Mozart. The guy is a genius, and yeah. and the K two thousand was like 
that fucking that was wasted on the nineties. Like, I I just don't think people went, oh my god. But when you listen to it, like when you listen to the huge variation of music that, like that was downward spiral is a K two thousand, and then Frontline Assemblies after Tactical Neural Implant, like three or four albums is just, and then download Skinny Puppy, and then all of this R&B shit. So the the K2000 was creating dark, grungy horror, and it was also making this beautiful R&B, um, and everything in between. It's just, you know, it's fucking amazing. And it's built like a tank. And the, um, although my bloody effects chips come undone, um, and that, you know, 2,500 is also good, but blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm really dominating today. I'm sorry. I'm very caffeinated. Um, do I want to throw this to you? Brett, did you want to add anything or can we throw it to the, the, you know, the... I, I would just add, you know, it's like the, the 2000 is, is like a, uh, is, 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 I mean, it's such a powerful instrument for one, but, uh, it is a much grittier down to earth kind of machine versus the PC four. Um, what they brought to it, uh, you can, you can, you can, with the, with the performance controller aspect, what it made is, is that just on the fly, I want to figure out what this sounds like. And you mm. can do that to the whole range of, uh, of frequencies. Filters. Wow. Wow. Ivan, get off reverb now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, Rezzy, I'm going to, I see your hand, Alex. I'm going to throw this to Rezzy because I know Rezzy wanted to. Yeah, I just had a quick one. Since you were talking about the duck for um, bit modifier, um, for those of us who actually don't have a modular chassis and haven't uh, gotten that disease yet, there's um, a really cool software uh, companion component similar to that. Uh, Permutate uh, by Sonic Charge has similar um, bitwise math modification that there's something fun about that, like flipping switches on bits instead of like just adding distortion. I don't know um, uh, if it's predictable or, or artistic or aesthetic in any way, but you can get that crunch and then also, you know, move the high bit to the low bit position or subtract bitwise operations, XOR. You know, it's like, it sounds like you're doing computer programming, but you're destroying your audio signal path. Cool. And wow. I like Sonic Charge a lot, like their stuff. Um, is is very cool bit speak and um uh synth plant and uh what's the drum machine of theirs that i use all the time um microtonic fantastic little drum synth so oh boy good good thank you um alex i see your hand i'm gonna go in after you yeah uh, they, they, they showed an even newer k2000 uh synth but my worry about them would be that uh, the interface isn't really fast enough to deal with this complex engine because like um, i have this this one keyboard um the quark which has like this multiple parameters but it's just so annoying to skip through the, the pages that if you don't have a software editor it's like a hassle so um I'm a bit worried that there are two engineered engineering brains to to make it like for accessible for synthesizer sound designers. I don't know. Um, my advice is to have a look at it um, because in the US they're three grand and three fucking grand for a synth that's a hundred two hundred and fifty six voice. Um, and, and it's taken the, the, uh, the, the learning and everything else of the, um, of all of the, the, the last 30 years of, of K series, well, actually 40 years of K series synthesis. Um, the Kurtzwell is a little bit of menu diving, uh, but it's, um, I just can't go on enough about how good it is. Um, you'd have to hear it. Uh, and you'd have to fuck around with it. Um, the thing that struck me about that, that, so there's this remarkable synth called a 2700 and all of the demos of people talking about the fucking piano. Um, oh, the piano sounds good. And it's like, I don't give a shit, dude. I don't want to get a fucking Kurtz. See, dude, a Kurtzwell is like this low orbiting ion cannon. 
that will obliterate. It's the Death Star. And you're telling me about the piano sound? I don't give a fuck. Like, I get a whatever for that. Dude, this is a fucking Kurtzwell. Um, no one is 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 going, holy shit, this this thing's crazy. Um, I, I just I see your hand, Brent. I know you want to jump in. Give me a sec. I will say that the Kurtzwell is a kind of it's a well fuck, I'm done with synthesizers for like 10 years now because it's this is so much shit that this synth's got. It will be built like a tank. You'll be buried with it. It's a 256 voice polyphony dude. Um, and that was the thing about the emulator four is that when I decided to keep it, I just looked around the studio and went, I need to get rid of some gear now. Ivan, get off reverb now. Ivan. Dude. Um, and, yeah, uh, I, I, I have to get off. I, I, you know, I just made this realization that I like, there are synths in this room that I've just stopped using because the, 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 the this machine that I got for almost nothing because I swapped it for some stuff um, is so incredible. Um, and so I it sort of cured my, my gear acquisition syndrome. Nothing will cure Ivan's gear acquisition syndrome. Um, Rezzy, I see your hand, but first I want to throw it to um, Brett who wants to say something very cheeky and inappropriate. Go. Actually, I was just going to uh, say that uh, it, it, what's well, one of the things that's so fun about it is, you know, when you have a, a really good drum kit, like like a lot of them, have, like it has a lot of really good drum kits. And then you can just at will just turn that into something that like maybe one note will work for. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. Uh, and and I, the other part I was going to say is I understand why they keep comparing the piano and having the 2000 and the PC4 side by side. What I realized that they're what they keep comparing is its ability to produce those harmonics that sound realistic or completely alien. Um, and I'll also say that. Um like my mind was blown with the K2000 and it still does where you can introduce something like a sample or a drum loop or something, and you can modulate it with the, the waveform modulation. So you can have a drum machine that is distorted and yet there's a tone to it. And as, and you can say that it's the, it's going to be the same drum machine across the, the keyboard. It's not going to change its pitch, but the tone that's modulating it will. So you can actually play this thing like an instrument and that is like, oh my God, it's so fucking like, like, and that's the thing is that like the emulator four, it's great synth, but the Kurtzwell is something, it, it's a fucking death star. Like it's, it, 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 it is a death star that, that can, like what it does is not synthesis. What it does is, is, is it, it, it it's the event horizon of synthesizers. It went to hell and it came back. And then they went here. Ironically, Event Horizon's got a lot of Kurtzwell on it. That's it. It's the Event Horizon of, of synthesizers. That's what it is. Um, was who somebody wanted to talk? Did I just interrupt Razzy again? So okay, Alex, Shlo's yours. I'm turning my mic off. I think the, the Kurtzwell stuff just went so under the radar of the average synthesizer enthusiast and musician. Um, maybe that changes if they bring out a new one and every synth YouTuber will make a review on day one. Um, but of course, I don't need every synthesizer, but I'm excited to try one out at this one. I, and that, that's actually a really good point because I was watching all the huge, like I hate YouTubers. I fucking hate it. And I don't, the only people who were reviewing it were, oh, I like playing piano in my gospel band and that's great. But it's like, did, what you don't. The problem under is that it doesn't have a cutoff knob. You know, you need to be in the right menu, and it's not like. And synthesizer people just want many knobs that do one thing. Yeah. In general. Well, I I think that's ironic. You know, you're you're probably absolutely right. But that's Ray Kurtzwell, is that the like. He is from another planet. 
and, mm. and, 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 you know, when people were joking about, oh, there's an AI that can create an easy you want, ha ha, happy April Fool's Day. It's like Ray Kurtzel's working on that now. <laughs> um, and and I, I think the 27, I might be wrong on this, but it's got a, it, it's standing by for an update that will be AI driven sounds where you put a prompt into it and it will say, how's this one? Um, but it's like, it's, you know, if I was going to start all over again and get one synthesizer, um, because I can't afford a Moog one and Hey, look, there's Moog ones do this much. Uh, this is what a Kurtzwell does. Like I've got a disc on my Kurtzwell right here. This is it. This is the analog Kurtzwell disc. This is the best analogs I have ever fucking heard. And I have to tweak my fucking Moog for days to get it sounding as good as this disc from 1990. Um, it does every synth better than the synth itself. I lined up my Jupiter 8 versus the K2000's Jupiter 8, and I just went, oh, fuck. Um, that's because, uh, yeah, um, I... Yeah, anyway, there you go. That's me. High horse off. Alex, go. I forgot what I wanted to say. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sorry. Maybe That's right. Is it samples or is it uh, patches? Is it what? The analog patches for the K1000. Are they sampled or are they synthesized? Synthesized. Ah. The synthesizer on the, on the, uh, on, uh, the Kurtzwell K series is... Um, like if you're into sound design, if you're into making weird, wacky, fantastic, crazy sounds, and you just really want to do the soundtrack to fucking June or fucking whatever, get a Kurtzwell, get a fucking Kurtzwell. And then you can still use the same thing to make um, R and B or downward spiral or whatever you want. 256 fucking samples. And it blew my mind. Cause I, I went into a guitar center recently where I sold those kids a fucking uh, Rev 2 great synth um but it's like i was walking around the floor going oh look at all this shit it's all the same and then in the back in the back room with all the second hand gear no one who gives a shit about anything was a 2700 um and it's like i don't like that there's so many things about the 2700 i don't like but it's like hey grim how you going um it's just look you know i know if i spent time in a 2700 you'd make that bitch sing but it's interesting that I heard people compare uh, 2700 to 2600. And so they pulled the sounds out of the 26 and stick it in the 27 and it wasn't the same. Or they were very similar, but they didn't, they weren't exactly the same. Um, yeah, if I, I had to choose between a Kurtzwell and almost any other synth, I would be going with the Kurtzwell. Like, you know, it's that sort of synth that you, you don't use it because for some reason you hate it. And then two years later, without turning it on, you turn it on again and you, you just go, fuck. Like, yeah, like you, you maybe you forget about it because you're traumatized and overwhelmed or something. I don't know. Um, but it's. It's brilliant. It's fucking brilliant. There you go. So that's Ivan's face that he uses when he's looking at reverb. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Rob just said. Yeah, thanks, Rob. I see your comment. I totally agree. Um, okay. Uh, do we want to turn on and talk about something else? Wow, Ray fucking Kurzweil. I'm Alex. cool with Kurzweil worship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ale I Rezzy! <laughs> this is not funny! <laughs> um, uh, Alex, I see your hand. I started to, um, when I was making samples, I started to cut off everything, not below, not only below a certain point, but also the very top end because I've been wondering why my self-made samples sounded so bad if I put it in my sample and my uh, thought process is that I just um, tri trigger so much aliasing that it's um, uncomfortable so I just cut everything above 18 kilohertz 
Wow. Uh, and you do that in the sampler. Yeah, but I, I'd rather do it in the DAW. So it, there is no chance that these certain frequencies um, get turned into aliasing in my sampler. Wow. That's a really interesting idea. Yeah, because I'm just desperate because I somehow my own set is sometimes not good and sometimes not. And I'm trying to figure out what's the, uh, the reason why they sometimes sound great and sometimes not. So that would be my, like cl cl clipping and aliasing were my biggest um, culprits or like um, suspects. Wait, can I ask you, when you export something to your sampler, uh, do you normalize it to zero or do you go a little lower? Uh, I normalized to zero because I looked at all the factory sounds and they are all normalized to zero. So that's why I do it to zero, but otherwise I would have done it to, uh, to a bit less. But you can also turn it down in the sampler. Thanks, Rob. Um, thank you. Okay, this is really interesting because I... Um, uh, 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 this is an interesting question. Uh, I have found that... If I go from my Emacs to, uh, if I dump on it via uh, SME, the sample MIDI dump a uh, thing, about 10% of the files that go across, sometimes 20% are distorted. Um, and if I go via the uh, USB key, um, maybe 5% are distorted. And I think it's because um it's it's normalized to zero db and i've started normalizing them to i think it's minus three yeah um minus three is kind of dramatic when you think about it um but the the uh the emacs doesn't have the internal structure to like i can go in and turn stuff down um but I have a suspicion that there's a few stages before that when you're hitting a big chord it's like okay that's plus six and you just blew it um so I'm minus three is what I'm doing. And another thing I'm doing as well is uh, I'm trying in, say, you know how a lot of sounds have got that heavy meaty section. Um, uh, besides doing a high pass filter, um, I will also just in, in the door before I bust it over, I'll find that fatness, which is usually 400. And I just knock it out just a tiny bit. And that helps in a lot of the clarity and a lot of the stacking. Um, because when it's got that meaty bit and you change the octave of it, or the, it does not sometimes translate very well. Um, interesting. Alex, tell me more about this. I might be completely off, but there's a difference between the, the, the sample peak level and the actual peak level of the reconstructed waveform. That's called a true peak. Or true peak. Wow. Yeah. Tell me more. Maybe that's, yeah, because, um, in digital, of course, you have the samples, and from these samples uh, in the converter, they get reconstructed into an analog wave. But um, because of the way the reconstruction works, the, the reconstructed wave can ha have a higher amplitude than the uh, highest sample. So that's how that could work in theory. It's not much, it's maybe a point of a dB, but maybe that's the thing that clips your samples. Huh. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you. I am learning. Um, Rob once filled an entire porno inside his Kurtzwell K2000. It's that good. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Um, okay. Uh, does anybody else want to talk about anything else or should I just leave everybody looking at reverb and porn reverb is porn like I, I i i yeah it is i um i actually whenever i go on i'll put it in a a, a quiet browser what do you call those incognito secret, yeah uh, yeah in, in in one of those incognito because i don't want that shit coming up in my in my advertising feed um i don't need it but you know just because of a lot of shit that's going on recently with me i don't um uh i don't gear acquisition has just gone i'm i'm, I'm blessed yeah I, I don't need it 
because it's like, dude, I need a fucking song right now. And I look around this studio and I just go, fuck, there's so much gear in here. It's, it, and it's like, I never use a song where I'm using every single fucking modular. Um, anyway, uh, hold on. Uh, I see your hand, uh, Alex. Just give me a sec. Grim says, best of a bad situation. Can you use said distortion um, as an interlude between tracks? Uh it's probably best to like have a nice sound. Yeah, you could, but it's best to have a nice sample than fuck it up. Um, thanks, Swords. I don't know, should uh, 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 should out to Carl's music, Mr. Thanks. Thank you. I don't know what that is. Oh, you sent me money, Rob. Jesus, thank you so much. Um, wow, thank you. I think apparently there's a tip button on uh, YouTube, but I never use it. Thank you. Um, Alex, your hand was up, and I'm just talking a whole bunch of shit right now. Yeah, and we have another topic because um, I don't know. Maybe Ivan wants to go first. No, I don't want Ivan to talk anymore. <laughs> um, no, Ivan, I'm sorry. Ivan, talk to me. Okay, um, I've been starting to record myself for practice, and um, that worked great in the sense that I think it helped me to get better but uh, to become better uh, but uh, i feel a bit clunky doing it because i just make a tr track re records um, record it then go back and i just want to have like a short section that i just quickly record quickly listen back and i wanted to ask if anybody of you has had like a better workflow are we talking synthesizers or are we talking voice voice and guitar and keyboard playing stuff like that okay i throw the floor open that's such a great question. and ivan write down your question because we'll, we'll jump back to you in a sec um uh uh uh, uh, uh resi we just lost ivan talk to me um alex you're in ableton live and it's hidden by default but their um take lanes are pretty usable I'm not in love with keeping takes, but this is your solution. You just let that shit loop. Huh. It's going to keep the takes. The takes are there. You can unroll them, and it gives you the freedom to just repeatedly go over your thing. And if you're in that phase, that mindset where you're doing improvisation or learning or figuring out or getting a sense, it's pretty powerful. And like other um, take lanes, you can do a quick drag to select sections once you're done with it. You can audition the individual things in isolation. You can do all this stuff that you'd expect to do as if they were separate tracks, but you just got a thousand of them from the past 20 minutes of, uh, you know, improvising over a two bar loop. Um, I don't really use it that much. Matter of fact, I've sent some sessions out to people for like remix or, or collaborations. And they're like, oh yeah, I unrolled your vocal take. I heard you I'm like, oh, Jesus. That's why it's 32 gig session. Um, but it's doing it anyway. Like Ableton, you know, how their their simplicity is the, the foremost and the functionality is buried underneath. This is another one of those things. Um, I, I really do like, though, like labeling takes and obliterating ones. But if it has something to it, sometimes I just drag it to the end of the session and say, you know, name the clip of what I like about that thing. Um, vocal has the right pitch contour. Uh, vocal has the right grit. Vocal has the right um, whatever, you know, thing. don't need to explain every single thing that you might like about a vocal. Uh, but I do it. I do it that way and, and feel like it's enough because keeping around the takes in perpetuity People joke about this and they get a, a, a session to mix and it's 144 tracks of guitar. Oh, wow. But it's like just variations on the same guitar part. And like you decide in the mix, which one's best. And it's like, there's a thing to throwing out what you've done and, and like arriving at a point through the iteration and being like, okay, this is the apotheosis of my, of my capabilities. I'm right here. It actually meets most of this stuff. So someplace between all of those take lanes that you fl flip down the little triangle you'll see and throwing shit away with abandon is probably like a really cool automatic passive place to be where it's collecting the stuff and you're throwing stuff out and you don't have that much to deal with in the end but you're definitely there to inspect it and do the same kind of satisfying looking into it and learning um 
or don't do it at all and do the you know the extra tracks and know that you've put your pin in um vocal take one vocal take three vocal take five and kept those there's there's I, you know, there's probably a middle ground that a lot of people do too but i i i believe in using the leveraging you know what the what the software does on its own to some extent so thank you um yeah same i i actually put just cubase has got a really easy function to just dump shit down um i try and keep a lot of bad takes because the bad takes help me figure out i mean you were getting into this anyway you know how to improve on it and stuff um that's all i got uh did you want to reply to that or ivan did you want to add to this or thank you for your answers uh i specifically meant it more for like actually practicing the skill rather than crafting a song oh. uh, so but maybe you, you do yeah I, I think it still applies in in, in almost oh, okay. you know in almost the same way i mean when i say assessing the take it is it could be for either it's fitness for the song or fitness for what I was trying to do or the pitch is perfect in this one. I'll keep it. But I understand the distinction about you don't need to necessarily keep them for quality or what you liked about them. But that note to self is still effective for future. Oh, let me check back on my vocal practice session. What was I doing good in 2024? What am I doing great in 2026? Here's how I've improved. So there might be some, maybe I'm trying to draw a parallel to, to, something that, that isn't necessarily there, but I think that it, it can be the same mechanism for, for learning and stuff. Excellent. I hope that's good. Uh, Ivan, I, I see your hand. I'm going to throw to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was going to say that there are different kinds of gear acquisition syndrome, some less bad than others and some less cool than others. I mean, first, Let's do keep in mind, I have not bought a new synth. I haven't bought a new synth in like two years. I've been very good, mostly because I have no space. I ran out of space because this room is tiny, which does lead to the other kind of gear acquisition syndrome. I mean, just looking at, you know, K4, K2000s on, on reverb, or there's looking at, you know, Emacs on reverb, or... Or there's looking at um, flooring choices on uh, Home Depot. Or there's looking for two by fours on various woodworking sites. Or there's looking at electrical boxes or light switches or light fixtures, or like, let's not even get started on the bathroom, the most expensive room that's gonna go on the third floor. Uh, that's all the same thing, sorta, but you know, two things. One is way more expensive. And two, it is, nobody's going to use the word cool to describe that or the results. It, 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 it's not cool. It, it, reverb is at least fun. You can imagine the fun it's going to be. Uh, bathroom wall tile, not, not really fun. That's, that's, it's, not, it's, it's a necessity. But, but it doesn't need to look cool so that, you know, you're not like just bored out of your mind when you go to take that morning dump. <laughs> uh, can you sound any more Milwaukee when you say that, please? Um, thank you. Well, I mean, I, I could throw on my Chicago accent, you know, and get some coffee and then the coffee kicks in and then it's time to go take a dump. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, thank you, Ivan. Yes. Uh, gear acquisition syndrome is a curious one. Uh, I have a lot to say about this, but first, and thank you. I see the hand of Brazil. I have a serious question. And since we got dragged back into this gear bullshit, um, Maybe, I don't know if there's even an answer to this, but I have kind of the opposite on, on reverb. I use it, um, I go into my closet, I pull out the pedal that I want to use. Pedal doesn't turn on, pedal doesn't even light up, pedal doesn't pass audio, take it apart. Oh, it's, there's no magic smoke that got released. There's no phenolic scent. There's no burnt component. Done, can't fix it. Bench fee is 125, another hour of repair time is gonna be 60, that's 200 bucks. Then I go on reverb and I say, oh, 
These things are selling for 250 bucks. That's $30 more than the repair price, but I'll get it right away. But then I'll make e-waste. What do I do? How do I decide? That's you know, a question. Okay, so Reverb has got a, has got a whole bunch. Same with eBay, uh, eBay uh, not working stuff. And if you say it's not working and you sell it at, like you can, if you have an Emacs or something like that, that's not working, it's worth a lot of money. Um, because there are people out there who want to fix this shit. Um, and, uh, or they think they want, or they want a hobby or something. So if you've got a pedal or something that doesn't work, put it on there and explain it doesn't work. Solid point. And, um, you will sell it because people want it. Um, yes, that's what I think. I think that's a really good point. You know, it didn't even dawn on me to just churn it. Turn it around, flip yeah. it. Yeah, plus I mean, Rob not, loves. Yeah, yeah, Rob's loves fixing stuff. Cool. I mean, I do too, but I just it's a, a I don't have, I don't have the time. I I want to get to the Arp Omni before I start taking apart guitar pedals, and that's got like four hundred capacitors that need replacing. So mm. someday. So cool, mm. Alex. It's a weird thing. I even had. Uh, yeah, acquisition, gear acquisition syndrome for a table once, and not so quite recently. So um, yeah, imagine what I could do with the table. I could so, put so much uh, gear on it, and it would be, look really great on video. And I could fold it. <laughs> I, it's really curious that uh, I think that. Uh, I, I realized I had a problem when I went, okay, well, for $1,500, I could do to work on my teeth that I really need, or I could buy a synth. Um, and that's when I went, oh, wow, I've got a problem here. Um, uh, and plus, you know, when I have friends who are in a bad place and I'm buying a new synth, I think that's that I don't need. I think that's kind of a poor reflection on me. Um, and so if I'm not like, uh, well, if I'm going to, if I can afford that new synth and I can throw some money at someone who is a friend and who needs it, um, then it's okay. But if I can't, I'm, th that's just where I'm at right now because I, I know people are really hurting and I, um, uh the tendency is to push it as far as you can um yeah i i don't yeah th that's sort of how where i've got to now um that you know there's a whole bunch of shit going on and it's like for me at least i just gotta go yeah um but and, and then so i, I I'm, I'm always bringing it around going okay well how can i fall in love with this gear again and the answer is go on reverb and look at the gear that you own. Um, go on YouTube and Google that piece of gear that you have and you will fall. Like I kind of had a, a moment with a synth that shall remain nameless because I just can't get into it. And then I looked at people using it and I looked at gear reviews and I looked at people and I just went, oh my God, I have not got into this synth. Um, and then everything was okay because I got into something that I already own. Um, I do need to sell stuff um, because it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like, like, like I said, it's like how many fucking Emacs do you need? How many, um, you know, how much of this shit do you need? So um, I need a baseline right now. And a synth is not going to give me that baseline. The way I work, the synth is not going to give me the baseline. It, it's going to come out of my fucking head. Maybe I need to go for a walk. Ivan! That's just Gotta agree. Gotta agree. I uh, was it uh, two weeks ago, I took my System 8, which has been on the rack for just sitting there for ages, to uh, one of the Milwaukee synth meetups because a friend that needed to see the System 8 in person, she's looking for a new synth. Uh, and and I had forgotten how much I loved that thing and you know having it plugged in and running 
and other people oohing and eyeing over it really got me back into, you know, needing to use it. So true, too true. Also, uh, speaking of people in, you know, helping people out, in August, we're going to be back out in L.A. again. Ah, huh? cool. And we're taking you out to dinner. Like, Thank you. <laughs> you know, little thanks, man. I appreciate that. Thank you very and much. Then, and I will point out, you were super fun to hang out with in person. So, you know, Thanks. It was good fun. It was a fun wanna, night. Absolutely. One of the high points of the trip. Oh, right, cool. Thank you. Besides yeah, losing your phone. Yeah, losing and and catching COVID, but I don't think. Oh was, yeah! Oh, that's right, you did too. Yeah, sorry. So yeah, and managed to catch COVID with everybody else at the event. But I would do it all again. <laughs> cool. All right, and and thank you. Yeah, good fun. Um. Yeah. And um. Yeah, I I just think um. Trying to I don't know. Well, like I said, there's magic in synthesizers. I believe that. I believe that there is something unique in this. And, and you know, when you stare at something and you're, you're poking it and prodding it and putting energy into it, like, yeah, just try and fall back in love with it. Try and remember why you went, I'm going to buy this thing. Even, like, when I buy a synth, I, and I haven't bought a synth in three years or something, um, four years four years uh pre-covid yeah pre-covid i got the um uh, the rev 2 pre-covid and um keep pictures of it when you buy it of the actual machine you buy and and if you're ever in a place right now look at those pictures again and, and you start yeah you know but um yeah. Anyway, th that's all I got. I mean, like, I, I just fucking got to figure this fucking song out. I can I can talk to you about this song if you want. Uh, your hand is up, Ivan. So if you need to talk, please. Tell us about the song. Okay. I don't want to say what song it's based on, but it's I think it's the it's one of the earliest pop songs ever written, and it's brilliant. And it was written by somebody who was brilliant like a couple of notches below Mozart, brilliant, 200 years ago, brilliant. And you know the song. Great song. It's a fucking pop song. Uh, anyway, so I'm trying and it's got this brilliant rhythm. And the, the rhythm is just driving rhythm. It's fucking great song. Um, and uh, good on you, Rob. Oh, Diana, welcome. Um, so the thought was I was going to modernize or utilize the rhythms that are in this song. And if you're ever lost, like if you don't know what to do and you want to do something really dark, listen to The Planet Suite by Holst. Um, every sci-fi soundtrack or everything soundtrack is derived from that album. And it's like a hundred and something years old. And it's fantastic. JPEG, oh my God, dude, good to see you and kitty um so my plan was to be biting or utilizing the, the rhythms in this song and more cats please i and, and and it just didn't work um the rhythm of the the vocals it works but the song doesn't work um and, and i can play it as a um, it's Carl, my demo vocals are always me talking, mumbling my way through the lyrics, just making sure that the rhythm is right and making sure I can breathe. Cause I always write lyrics where you can't breathe. So I have to get rid of ands, the, and stuff like that. So there's a, a beat in there where it's, and I actually notate when I'm writing lyrics, it's a bracket with an X and a bracket. And that means breathe. Um, yeah. And I, um, and sometimes when the, 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 uh, uh, everything's lowercase, but when something's hard for me to sing, I put a capital on the, on the part that hits the beat. Um, yes, Diana, breathe. Um, definitely. And it's just, it's what's really curious about this song is that I've got this idea and it's so strong, 
but it's letting it go going, you know, well, it got me to this point. So it's okay. They're like the booster rockets. I love those booster rockets. I'm so attached to those booster rockets, but when you're in orbit, let them go. Cause their job was to get you to orbit. My God, I wish I'd listened to my own advice. Um, it's okay to let it go and it's okay to listen to it and go, Hmm. It's a trick I learned from doing remixes is you listen to the chorus. Cause I never, I just want to hear the vocals. I don't want to hear anything else. Um, excuse me. You listen to the chorus and you put the bass line. If there's a chant or a vocal hook, the bass line rhythm follows that hook. So if it's, yeah, if it's, yeah, I just want to smash things. Good. Yeah. I just want to smash things. Good. And yeah, just one, two, one, two, three, four. So your bass line is going dunk, 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 dunk. And that little back thing there is a really nice chance to put a so then your baseline is now going bonk, 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 bonk. So you might now go, I want to put a uh, melody in that. So it might be bonk, 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 or bonk, 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 bonk. Um, there's a trick. Take that trick. Um, and you will make a remix happen because when the chorus hits and, and everything is jumping on that vocal, it's like, Oh shit, that is just stomping. Um, and even if it, it gets out of the four on the floor and the and the and the kicks and the rhythms are also because the trick is silence, man. And the trick is sometimes don't be on the beat. Um, because it's gonna set the next pick up to drop on you like a ton of bricks. Um, it's like, you know, what's the sound of one hand clapping? What's louder? Silence or clapping? What's louder, a whole bunch of people clapping or one person clapping? It's all about the perspective and what surrounds it. Um, uh, so maybe, you know, that's what I need to do. That's actually, I need to write a song like that. Um, hey, if you've been inspired by that, take it. Take that song um, with my blessing. Uh, and um, so that's where I'm at right now is that I'm just... And it's really funny that I, I was in this similar place with a track on the last album and I was very happy with it. It was something different. Uh, but this time I want to do something different. I want to do something way more simple. I want to simplify it. Uh, so it's really simple and really effective because it's funny. The vocals remind me of Eminem. Um, and I, I'm not really into Eminem, but uh, a very good friend of mine is into Eminem and they're exposing me to a lot more Eminem and I'm listening to the music and fuck that guy is good. Holy fuck. That guy is good. Um, so I'm, yeah, it, it's just nice to, you know, let go of them boosters and see where this orbit takes us. That's all I got. Bunk, 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 bunk. I know it thumps. Excuse me, I throw that down. Uh, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. There you go. Boom, I'll try that. Dunk, 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 dunk. One and two and three and four. Unk, 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 unk. Cause that also suggests a really nice kick drum pattern as well. Dunk, dunk. Dunk, dunk, dunk. That could work. I think I just figured the song out. Thanks, guys. But once I, like I said, if that inspired you, please, let's write a song together, but not together, but together. Um, does anybody want to jump in on this while I'm magically taking notes right now? Yeah, there's something I can't put into actual metric and scalar terms, but the kind of rhythmic displacement you're talking about where the the um, off off eighth note sixteenth note pushes stuff ahead by an eighth for a few beats so that they're only off for a little while and you repeat that and then you come back to the grid and then you leave the grid somehow making that happen so you're holding a dissonance on the downbeat on the one that's doing this the, this the displacing and that's also your strong metric point like it's on the one or on the on the three um, and your lyric has the the emotional word there so that those are all coming together with with the 
the dissonant non-chord tone, the note that's pushing the displacement, and the strong metric beat and the lyric all coming together and then losing it and coming back together. There's like, there's a real- Hot for teacher. Classic. <clears throat> Although hot for teachers, it misses the one, but I hear what you're saying. Yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah totally. There, I mean, there's a billion examples of it, but the, there's, the, mm. yeah. Yeah, that's actually really good. Um, to write, a, even, you know, to be offsetting and overlaying, like doing the helmet trick where you have a riff that's based on three that you drop it on top of each other. So the first time it, it hits the one, the second time it's off the beat, and then the third time it's back on and then it has a rest. Or doing something based on five, um, which a lot of bands in the, well, you know, it, it's such an effective trick and it yeah. works. It really works. There, and it doesn't even have to be pushing it off uh, into it, uh, you know, out, off the four, four time signature, but if you've got, dun, 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 you know, yeah. there's this, that's like, I mean, everybody does it very naturally, but if you think about what you're doing and pair that with some other um, events, Forcing yourself to like do all of those things at once can be, you know, like uh, the, 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 you know, where stuff gets invented. Yeah. 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 Fuck around and find out. And that's what's really great as well is that, you know, music is this strange mix between mathematics and spiritual wowness. Hopefully that the mathematics comes to describe it, not to create it. But sometimes. The yes. mathematics comes first and you do create it from the math. I mean, that does happen. Yeah. But well, that's a cool thing is that if you're in a rut, you've got a toolkit of uh, things that you can just pull on. And, and what we're talking about now is a really effective thing. Ivan, get off reverb, I swear to God. Okay. Um, um, if you've got a toolkit of, of things like this, that if you're just going, I don't know what to fucking do. Um, you know, and also a, a vocal thing, uh, coming back to your uh, thing that you brought up, Brett, was something in therapy, which is I feel because. And your verses are all I feel and your chorus is because I feel sad, I feel lonely, I feel this, I feel blah, 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 because my finger's on the button. Bum, 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 bum. Finger on the button. Ah, Rezzy, I see your hand. Yeah, there's a couple of um, tools that I used to use long, long time ago that they just added on a second time I get to mention new tools in um, Ableton Live 12 that I, I kind of think might be useful. Um, but there's uh, Transformer uh, for your MIDI uh, piano roll, uh, Transformer module now on every clip um, so that you can do this kind of displacement. It just dawned on me. Um, instead of selecting the thing and shifting it over, you can do... Uh, transform it by a beat or move stuff um, so it'll add a, a, a fl flourish. Um, I don't have my whole head around exactly which ones are which. There's some that will generate that stuff for you in key, and there's some that'll modify notes that you've already got, but there's probably a lot of um, interesting strength in using either third-party or built-in tools for your DAW on the piano roll once you've got your bump, 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 bump <laughs> on the root doing nothing start throwing some of those like in key or in scale transformers on them to get your uh, variety and a little bit of generative aleatoric music where you're working with the computer, but you're telling it what some of the parameters are that you want to stick to. I want this to be Lydian in four, four mm. click, click, click variety, mm. that kind of thing. Yeah. That's what's really great about a lot of the new kits and caboodles, um, is that use them to, mistake and fall over you know use them because when you say new i'm sorry i think you're, you're probably being from 1989 yes thank you. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> anything yeah, after 89 yeah. new um uh i can't tell if ivan's looking at keyboards or floor or, or kitchen tiles anyway yeah but but muck around with it and that's another great thing about a sampler is that you have a you know, if you've got a loop, just don't, don't just drop it on the one, drop it on the one and two and three and four on one and two and three and four. Like that's like a ding, 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 So you're getting all the, and same with like a baseline. If you've got a baseline that doesn't work, you know, like, as he said, 
copy paste it, move it around, or hit those little doodad buttons. Mm, doodad buttons. Um, and I do need to get into the blaster beam more because it's hanging up in the side of the room, and just my front, my little studio is covered in pieces of spaceship right now, which I will be sending to people soon. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's quite heavy though. But no, it could because it's aluminium or aluminum. Um, does anybody else have anything radical they want to bring up? This has been fun. Thank you. We could raid. Because I'm sure there's something amazing on MTV TV. Um, Diane, are you still there? Maybe we should we should raid. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to call this. We're going to hang back here. Um, we could let's do it. We're going to hang back here uh, and have a chat and hang out. Um, and uh, every Saturday, I hope, um, Art of Rock is happening, and we're going to do this stuff and be planned or not be planned or whatever. Um, if you got three bucks that you want to spend on a psycho i'd love that i just bits patreon as little as three bucks a week and a, a month thank you so much again um ice planet 9000 uh, the new ice planet 9000 album is there uh and um i'm very proud of that one it's quite dense for ambient music i was listening back to it going oh this is kind of dense um it's meaty i like it i hope you like it too um, Patreon members all got a free copy. Please download it. Uh, and Industrial Incisions playlist, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, Super Chat donations are the bomb. Thank you, Rob. Yes, they are. We are now going to raid on over to MTV TV. Um, our CD for Ice Planet 9000, maybe in a couple of weeks. We're seeing what's happening there because I got to build boxes. Um, we're going to go to MTV TV. And it's amazing. Please, 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 please jump on. And remember, they have a Patreon. So if you want to um, put money to, to really keeping alternative music going, MTV TV. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or X or whatever the hell, that's where we're going. Uh, Twitch MTV TV. And I promise you, you are going to find a band in within the first hour that you fucking love. I promise it's so good. Um, so Diana, if you want to set that rate off, um, we're just going to stand here and talk about random stuff. Um, and it's funny. I think that rhythm is actually going to work. Isn't it crazy how the cerebral cortex works? A short story by Carl Learmont. It is funny how the cerebral cortex work. Um, I'm going to set the raid on. How's that raid going? Have we raided yet? Mm -hmm. Mine did. It raided? Oh, good. Thank you, Diana. Um, bunk, bunk. Oh, we, I didn't put this on um, Instagram. Oh, well, who cares? Bunk, 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 bunk. Oh, no, look, I'm so late. Total sore. Fuck off, please go away. Oh, I hate your face. Yeah, I gotta um, break out a bunch of microphones so I can do some recording so the samples I need. So I, I I I did this thing where I went off um I think we're still live, I don't care. I had to clean out all my computer crap because it was full of crap and it was like going, I don't want to deal with this. Yeah. So I, I sent whatever crap cleaner or something to get rid of everything so I would operate better. And I went, oh yeah, we'll get rid of the passwords too. So now I have to re-log into any, everything. Thank you. Oop. Thank you very much. Do you use a password manager? Yes, I do. Okay, it's, cool. it's there. It is there. Actually, you told me about that. I'm going to kill this stream. And thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, go enjoy.